So just got done with the interview. I'll put that up as soon as possible. But now I'm gonna enjoy the day, go out for a bike ride in town. This morning had a small breakfast because I had to get ready for the interview. Um, quick four banana smoothie, just water and a little bit of sugar. Just had that casually while interview was going on. Having some water, easily done. Just enjoying the day, enjoying the Saturday, living the dream. So here we got some oats. Oats. Put a little bit of rice milk in this. Some maple syrup. Easily done. So I've never tried this before, but here it is. Let's give it a go. Mmm, it's tasty. It's a bit hot for my tastes, but tasty nonetheless. I'm gonna chat on this second, go back outside for a bike ride. Easily done. Round number two, oats, oats cooked in water, a little bit of rice milk, a little bit of that. Round three. Lightning and thunder, definitely on its way. Should probably get back home. Who needs, who needs a convertible? when you could just throw on the iPod and just cruise on the bike. I mean, that is a convertible. It's better than a convertible. I mean, what's better than that? Feeling good. I mean, I love driving in a convertible, but this beats it, hands down, because you're doing it. You're the convertible. You're close to nature. You're not polluting. Burn fat, not oil. Just cleaning the bike. Just got home in time. Just beat the storm. So hello there, we are at dinner time. So what you wanna do is you wanna eat this at room temperature. You don't wanna eat it when it's this hot. You'll not only burn your mouth, your tongue, and have an unpleasant time, you won't even enjoy your food because you'll be, oh, oh, and you'll mess up your teeth too. Um, hot food really messes up your teeth. So you don't wanna do that. Um, so you just put this down, room temperature. But you wanna eat also, before you get that sort of, the hunger crazies, you know what I'm talking about. When you start to get undercarved, you want to eat before that because you might say things that you don't mean. You might do things that you'll regret that, because you're just, you're, your mind's not working properly. So you want to eat with your carbs before you're hungry. Drink before you're thirsty. Because that's a sign your body's saying, look, jackass, you got to drink something. Look, jackass, you got to eat something. So, quick tips. Now, let's chow down. Well, we gotta wait first, but yeah. Round number two. Round number two. Easily done. Here it is, the Q&A time. Q&A. Anyway, if you want banana flavored hair, put in the comments below. What? Anyway, um, how are you able to eat that much food? Uh, there's no way I could eat, I could eat three or even two heads of romaine plus rice. I'm transitioning to vegan, and most times I'm getting only around 1,600 to 2,000 calories per day. Um, I feel good, and I have high energy, improved mood. I'm not, I don't know if I'm getting the nutrition that I need because I'm so full, and I can't eat anymore. I mean, I don't know your height, your previous diet, um, how old you are, how, how long you've um, been on a vegan diet. If you're just starting today, if you just started last week. If you weren't calorie restricting, if you were bulimic, if you were um, anorexic, I don't know. And that is a lot of factors that play into it. But if you're feeling good, then great. Then keep doing what you're doing. You know, you don't have to eat as much as I do. Um, but if you're feeling good, then keep keep at it. I mean, the only thing I would say is watch out to, um, for the, you know, I'm only a woman and I don't have to have that many calories kind of bullshit because that's I don't think that's true um, and if you tell yourself that you're probably gonna eat less because you'll say oh I'm a woman I'm petite and so but it sounds like you're in a good place um, I wouldn't worry about um, not hitting the nutritional targets um, just eat as much fruit as you want eat as many carbs as you want 
have variety throughout the year, throughout the years, then you're golden. So, like I said, as long as you're feeling good, good to you, good for you. Um, question: Can can you advise? Uh, can you advise what might be the best type of vegan foods to eat, and those to perhaps avoid whilst flying to avoid bloating, etc.? I've been vegan for about a month, travel a lot, and know that the body expands at altitude. Um, well, I mean, uh, not rice. Um, uh, salt will definitely puff you out, whether you're on a plane or not. Um, animal foods, high fat foods, um, will definitely puff you out too. So, avoid high fat foods, avoid foods with salt or added salt in them. Um, you know, animal protein will definitely puff you out too, uh, inflame your muscles. So, vegan foods. Just the typical vegan foods that I sort of adhere by or prescribe or love. You know, bananas, any types any type of fruit, mangoes, dates. You know, you just pick your favorite vegan food and eat it. Um, my favorite thing on a plane is to take potatoes and uh, sweet potatoes, steam them to the really soft, then mash them up in a moist container as, as compact as I can to get as, in as many as possible and then just have that on the plane easy easily done so whatever vegan foods you like eat those um, so yeah just questions keep throwing them and if I don't answer them keep throwing them again um, it's nothing personal it's just I try to read them quickly um Yep. What do you use instead of salt? How do you overcome salt addiction? Best way to overcome an addiction addiction is what I've seen in myself and through other people um, is just to cut it cold jerky, especially when it's something that's um, hurting you. So, in other words, you know, to if you want to quit your addiction to coffee or you know, let's have more extreme, just meat products. You don't want to get heart disease. You don't want to have a bad feeling. You don't want to feel bad. Cut this stuff right away. Because um, if you're, if you put it this way, if, you're, if your body's on fire, if, you, if your house is on fire, right? Your body's your house. If your house is on fire and you, and you say, oh, I'm just going to put less, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to um, put less, less gasoline on the fire. So you've been putting gasoline, you've been putting gasoline on the fire, and then one day you're like, oh, well, I'm going to just put less on, and then it'll, it'll be better, right? Not so much. The fire is still blazing. You might be adding less fuel, but the fire is still blazing. So it's like the body. If you want to get rid of uh, an addiction, if you want to get rid of something that's ca causing harm to your body, you want to cut it so your body has time, so your body has a chance to heal. Because if you just take away the salt a little bit, if you take away the meat products, the dairy products a little bit, you're still adding that fire. You're still adding that um, fuel to the fire. So does that make sense? Um, how did I overcome salt addiction? Um, that salsa had a lot of salt in it. I didn't realize. Um, and I'm feeling it. It just it just feels bad. So like after I, after I cut it for a while, I came back to it because I was like, oh, I'll try it. And it just, your taste buds change. You don't want that feeling. You don't want the, how it just like sucks moisture from your mouth. It's terrible. So, you know, give it a week without salt. It's easy. Or add just, eat as much as you want. And don't add salt. Add um, lime or lemon. Uh, I think, uh, if I'm a chef, if my chef skills are right, lemon sort of acts like salt. So you can try, try that. Um, I've noticed that in some dishes that I've cooked, when I've actually followed a recipe or tried to. Um, the lemon acted like a really good taste thing. So you could do that. You can tell I have really fancy chef skills. Can you give any advice on how to increase levels of iron and calcium? Eat plant foods. Um, I mean, iron and calcium deficiency, they say, oh yeah, you're a vegan, you, can, you have iron deficiency, of calcium deficiency, why do I... Look at my videos. Look at the caloric breakdown. You see that my iron is all the way up. 
my calcium is all the way up. And I'm not eating any of the calcium rich foods, even like leafy green vegetables. I'm not really eating those. I eat them like as a novelty, not as a staple. So eat enough calories of your favorite fruits, your favorite roots. Done. Iron, calcium, not a problem. Um, my mom is into health. This is from Amanda. My mom is into health, but not the high-carb, low-fat, vegan lifestyle. She says that we are all severely deficient in vitamins no matter how much we eat, whether plants or not. Somehow, something about the soil not having as many nutrients as it used to before monocrops and industrial farming. That's true. Kudos to mom. She claims that to have a well-balanced diet, supplements must be taken. Quote, we simply can't get enough nutrients from our food. Unquote. Any truth to this? I personally think she read articles sponsored by the vitamin producers, especially after using Chronometer. But I'd like to hear you t your take on this. So, um, Chronometer is great, but it doesn't take into account of the she soils that we have. So, um, in learning about sustainability in my classes, I've learned um, a lot about soil. So basically, not to bore you with soil science or anything, but essentially, if you don't take care of the soil, if you don't let nature take its course with the soil, if you don't let the... Um, uh, if you basically exhaust the, the soil, which mono uh, monocrops and monocultures do, which is the majority of... which is the way the majority of crops in the world, in the United States and increasingly in the world are being produced. When you do that, you just suck. You just keep putting fertilizer and um, herbicides and pesticides and all this crap in the soil. And it just completely devoids the soil of any nutrients. Then it just becomes this husk, this empty, lifeless thing that hold, that just holds the plant. When meanwhile, really good soil is full of thousands, if not millions of organisms um, it's home to many insects. Um, there's just all these intricate um, relationships. There's fungi and the mycorrhizae. And again, it gets too crazy. But basically, we fucked up our soils. I mean, not as bad as Australia because they have all the grass fed cattle, and, and that's just a mess because basically tore down all the trees for and planted grass fed cattle. Um, now the cattle eat the grass, and then you can't. And then the grass is, that land is overused, and it's crazy. Um, if you look at China, China is having to buy land in, um, well, have to import water because 70, over 70% of their service water is polluted, and they have to now, um, they're buying land in Africa um, so they can have food because their soils are so fucked up from industry and from um, pollution from industry. So it's a huge problem. So um, your mom is right to an extent. That's why I say if we eat seasonally, if we eat um, as vegans, if not vegans, as whatever. If you eat seasonally and if you eat a variety of foods throughout the year, I wouldn't worry about it. To be honest, if you're feeling bad and you know you're doing the, the right thing, then yeah, get tested. I think everyone should get tested anyway, even myself. I probably should do that soon. I plan to do that soon. Anyway, um, and chronometer, it tells you the nutrients, but at the same time, it doesn't know where the soil was. It, it goes back to what I was saying before. It doesn't know the quality of the soil. The, You know what I'm saying? So it's a guideline. It's a guideline to say, okay, this is where I'm at. Does that make sense? So... You know, fruit is the most nutritious food on the planet. Um, so you can tell your mom that. That, you know, you're eating the most nutritious foods on the planet. The most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Most nutritionally available foods to humans on the planet. So if you're not getting the nutrients, then, you know, we're all screwed. Um, but like I said, you know, if you if you make your mom happy, then get a um, sort of test or something. If she thinks you're deficient in something. Um, oh, I hope that helps. If it, if it doesn't, um, let me know. Um, the cereal I was eating was just bran flakes. Uh, I think some organic bran flakes or something. Low sodium. Bran flakes. How much sodium do you eat average a day? I don't know. Um, days like today where I had that salsa, 
um, too much. Usually I don't, I don't have any added sodium unless I have that Ezekiel bread which has some sodium, but even that's pretty minimum. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's definitely less than like 500 milligrams. Um, pretty sure. Okay. Did you detox when you started this? I feel terrible, look terrible, and I'm getting fed up. Um, I don't know what you're eating or why. I mean, maybe, maybe you're eating the same way. I don't know. Um, again, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, did I detox? Um, yes and no. Um, detox is just essentially when your body is, is doing house cleaning because you've basically um, numbed it depending on how long, maybe your whole life, for 40 years, you've numbed your body to actually feeling um, or actually healing and feeling what it has to do internally. So now all of a sudden you've unnumbed it or denumbed it. It's a new word. And um, yeah, it, it, you, it, it's not that it goes into shock, but you, you, you feel it happening. So you might have a headache and you might have a runny nose. Um, but it's the body's way of house cleaning. Um, so, I, I mean... I feel, I feel terrible, I look terrible, and I'm getting fed up. I say just keep reading books. Keep following people that are getting the results that you want, that are being honest about their results. Um, if that's me, if that's not me, then whatever. But I say read books. Um, you know, read books like The 80 10, 10 Diet, Star Solution by John McDougall. Um, and the Internet's full of stuff. It's full of great information um, to keep you on board. So, my, my advice is if something's not working, change it. Um, but you don't want to change it um, just out of ignorance, just out of not knowing what's happening. I'm not saying you're stupid or anything, I'm just saying that, um, I think you know what I'm saying. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, let's see, do you eat bread with gluten or gluten-free, and why? Thank you for these, oh, okay. Um, well, the bread I've been eating is gluten-free. It's like sprouted organic fancy stuff. It's good. But I do eat gluten. Um, you'll see I've eaten vegan bagels before in the videos. and I've eaten vegan bread. Um, I don't have a problem with gluten. I can eat a pound of pasta and feel fantastic five minutes after. Um, but some people do. And gluten is just a protein in wheat. So I... I think people say people freak out about gluten. I think if you if your body freaks out about gluten, then you should freak out about gluten. But just to stay away from it because you think it's healthy, I think you could stay away from um, you know the meat, dairy, the eggs, the fish, the oils, the fats. I think you stay away from those things before you stay away from gluten. So that's all I have to say about that. One more question. Um, uh, if I could find one, if not, okay. All right. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Again, put your comments, whatever you guys have a question on or something you want me to try, something you want me to do, something you want me to eat. Let me know in the comments. I'll do it. And, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, these videos are coming at you live. Well, not live, but kind of live because it's, you know, you can see me. This is, this is me every day. Always slim. Always happy, high energy, and um, yeah, so like this video if you do, if you don't, I don't care, and share this with somebody who needs it, who needs the inspiration to eat better, to eat healthier. So this is Jaybird signing out, may your bananas always be right, peace.